When I think of autumn fragrances, I think of perfumes with rich, earthy notes that really complement the colder weather, the smell of rain, the smell of leaves on the ground, that nice mulchy smell of decay. So these are my six picks for fall fragrances. My first pick is Lolita Lampica by Lolita Lampica. This is a fascinating perfume. It opens up with bold, almost vegetal licorice. It's not a sweet American candy style licorice. It's not corn syrupy. No, it, it really does have this earthy quality. And along with the licorice are, it's kind of unexpected, but it makes sense. It's violet. So you go from this kind of bold smell to the delicate smell of these dainty little flowers. But together, the violets really complement the licorice. They both have kind of a pointy, jaggedy smell. Uh, the fragrance is, is definitely assertive. Uh, it has a personality, but it's not overwhelming. It, it's delicate and soft at the same time. It's a very sophisticated fragrance, and it doesn't really leap out at me as particularly feminine or particularly masculine. I think that either men or women could wear it really successfully. And after all, Perfume is invisible, so you kind of, you're, you're the picture and the frame that this little glaze of glory goes on to. Lalique, uh, Lolita Lempica was created by Anique Minardo, and she's the super freak perfumer talent behind all these great perfumes, including Bulgari Black and Dior Hypnotic Poison, and those are both perfumes with flair as well as a certain disturbing beauty, and that's what I think Lolita Lampica has. My next pick is Tom Ford Gray Vetiver. If you smell Lolita Lampica on its own, it doesn't smell particularly sweet until you force it to have a perfume dance off against something dry like Tom Ford Gray Vetiver. And that thing is dry. I'm wearing it right here and it's actually making me feel like I need to drink water. Like there's just too much salt in my system. Vetiver does that. It's, it's such a, interesting little device. It's, it's a grass, but it's woody and it's smoky at the same time. And it's, it smells earthy, but not dirt earthy. It's more like you're living in a Unabomber hut made out of jungle grasses, but a Unabomber with a better attitude or else I'm going to have to report you. Now, gray vetiver is definitely a perfume with a great attitude. It, it is smoky like a lot of vetiver, but it's not as um, kind of deep and, um, and grassy, and that's because there's citrus in there. It definitely is lightened up with a little kickoff of citrus, and it's very accessible. And this is a lighter autumnal fragrance, probably for those Indian summer days where like, if you're here in Los Angeles, where I am, and it's 90 degrees in November, well, that's when you need a little lightness to put a little jut in your strut. Gray vetiver does have that lightness, and um, it does have longevity as well, and those are two qualities that you don't always get in the same package. Uh, it, there is a nice little bit of nutmeg in there, a little spiciness, and uh, it does dry down to a nice, woody vetiver that just kind of hums along and just supports your coolness. My next pick for fall is Diptyque Le Trois. Le Trois is the first incense perfume I ever bought when I started my incense craze that I'm still on and that was probably about 10 years ago. And incense comes in a lot of flavors. It swings in a lot of directions. You can go hippie style with the Nag Champa incense. Uh, it can be churchy, uh, like Comme de Garçon Avignon. That's a great example of a churchy incense. Um, it can be totally biblical, Old Testament, Queen of Sheba, Arabic style, like the, the Amouage Atars that I love so much, Jubilation 25 for men. Um, now, uh, Lotois is like none of those. Forget I ever said any of those other incenses. No. Lotois is a completely different ball of wax. It's kind of like um, the smell of the ingredients for incense before any of them are burned. So it's incredibly aromatic. It's really the smell of a Mediterranean hillside. So you have these 
just intense herbal qualities. Um, uh, rosemary, there's thyme, uh, there's myrrh, and I love myrrh. Uh, there's pine, and it it's just um, intensely refreshing. And pine is not a popular perfume ingredient, I think particularly with Americans, because in America we have an association of pine with the toilet cleaner. So um, while that's great for your clean toilets, that's not really the, the vibe you want to give off when you're anointing yourself with an, with an elixir. And, um, but I would say, I would hazard that Le Trois does not smell like a clean toilet at all. No, it has that kind of that fresh um, cleansing pine smell, which then quickly warms up on your skin to a, a real sappy, almost sweet warmth. Do you like how I do this? Like warm, <laughs> warm hand gesture. Um, and my favorite, absolute favorite part of Lotois is the myrrh. Myrrh has such a beguiling quality that's almost disgusting. It, it and in fact, when I had my first bottle of Lotois, um, I ended up not wearing it very much, even though I was fascinated by it because I just. I, I couldn't understand it and I, I just didn't accept it. Back off, Le Trois. And uh, when I bought myself another bottle about a month ago, I finally got it. I finally understood it. And the thing with myrrh is that it's very dank. It smells like very fertile earth. Um, it's almost a cross between root beer and mushrooms. So it's sweet and um, just just earthy and a little musty at the same time. But as that develops in your skin, it starts to smell um, just very physical and um, very human. Now, I would hope that you smell human because that's a good tip off that you're alive. But uh, Lotois really does that for me. It really makes me feel alive. They say that um, myrrh is feminine and that frankincense is masculine. And, and I don't know, I don't really know the logic behind that other than that. Um, I consider frankincense very sacred smelling and, and myrrh is, is very of the earth. It's very human smelling. So I think together those, those two kind of, they go together like peanut butter and jelly. But back to Le Trois, I think that um, this fragrance is, is something that's very sacred and of the earth at the same time. And I love wearing it for that reason. And another fun fact is it's kind of old. It went back to 1975 and it's not easily gettable. You have to go to the Diptyque boutiques to find it. So that's just a little tip for you. My next fall pick is from Maison Francis Crejean and it's called Lumiere Noir Pour Femme. Francis Crejean is a hugely talented perfumer. He's done loads of things that I love. He did um, Lady Vengeance and uh, Miss Charming from Juliet has a gun. He's done um, the Indult line. He's done uh, Parfum MDCI. He's also done Jean Paul Gaultier, Fleur de Mal, and Le Mal. So he's been around. He knows what he's doing. And that's why he decided, I suppose, to start his own line, Maison Francis Kirchon. And I love a lot of his fragrances, but the one that I'm the most fuzzed up over at the moment is this crazy black light for the ladies, uh, Lumiere Noir Parfum. And it is a, just such a naughty rose. This rose is bad. It needs police tape around it because you're gonna get into trouble if you wear it. It's rose mixed with patchouli. And as you know, patchouli always brings the darkness. So if there's a composition with patchouli in it, you know it's gonna go to the dark side a little bit. Um, the rose is glorious, it's fruity, and then there's this um, sick kind of rubber thing that's happening when you spray it on. I just, oh, I just sprayed some on before I got in the saddle here, and um, it's kind of disturbing, that rubbery thing. I, I'm gonna attribute it to the Narcissus, which is a, a daffodil. It's a version of daffodil. And uh, ha Narcissus has a, a hay-like quality and it's also kind of bestial, a little animalic. So um, 
it's a flower with friskiness. And there's also cumin in there and cumin, you know, cumin is the sweaty spice. So if you want a little BO in your perfume, you're gonna turn to cumin. Now, maybe I'm not selling it so great, but on the skin, this thing is, it's kind of shocking. Um, it's, uh, it's really powerful and not in a, oh my gosh, you're hurting my nose and you're making my eyeballs melt powerful. It's, it's not that kind of thing. It's like, um, I know who I am. <laughs> uh, like it's, you know, I'm a woman, that kind of power. This stuff is, um, if you're feeling very queen like and ready to conquer, this is what you're going to be wearing. My next fall pick is Chanel Egoiste. This is the original Egoiste, not the platinum Egoiste, which is a little common, it's a little ordinary. No, the original Egoiste is by Jacques Polge. It came out 1990, I believe, 1991. And um, there's really nothing else like it. I've always wanted to talk about this perfume ever since I launched the good ship Katie Puckrick Smells back in October 2008, I think it was. Oh, we're having a gay old time here. Um, Ego East is very special. It's a spicy, soft rose with just glorious, milky, sensual sandalwood. I'm crazy about sandalwood and perfume. I think it's just the ultimate skin scent because sandalwood is, it's milky, it's a little tangy, it's almost borderline sour and sweet at the same time. And it, and it really does smell like just beautiful skin that's just been heated up by being alive and doing fun things and being around people who excite you. And uh, Egoist does that for me. It excites me and brings exciting people to me. Um, I hope you're all here. The thing that's great about Egoist is that um, in addition to not really smelling like anything else, it's, um, it lasts a long time and it's a little powerful in terms of strong. So you better go easy on the trigger finger there, buster. But it's also very distinctive. Like the composition isn't a big old mush sitting on your skin. It's not just like glop, glop, glop of all of these elements. No, it's, you can really pick out the, the woodiness. There's rosewood in there. There's a little coriander in there. Um, the rose, the sandalwood, and it's just a beauty. And I don't think I've ever smelled it on anyone. That needs to be remedied. You need to help me with that. You need to start wearing this, everybody, right now. And here's my hot tip. If you're a lady who likes to wear Coco Mademoiselle by Chanel, but you're really tired of wearing it because you've been wearing it for 10 years, you should try Ego East because that's not really a huge stretch. It still has that, that warmth, that, uh, that spiciness and the milkiness, and um, I think you could get away with it. Yes, I do. My final perfume pick is Amouage Memoir Woman. A lot of the Amouage perfumes are exceedingly dense and overstuffed, and that's in the best possible way. You smell things like um, Epic Man or Jubilation 25 for men, both of which I love, and it really smells like every perfume ingredient that was ever name-checked in the Bible is just crammed in there, and, um, and that's great. But Memoir is different. Uh, Amouage, true to form, true to their form, have released a memoir man and a memoir woman. And while both are based on absinthe, that very enjoyable green tipple that contains wormwood and is supposed to make you hallucinate, um, they both have that and it gives it kind of a modern feel a more contemporary feel, not quite as biblical, although who knows, maybe Cleopatra enjoyed a little absinthe, you never know. Out of the two memoirs, it's Memoir Woman that really caught my nose. That's the one that I think um, really stands out out of the two. And absinthe is a, has a very herbal, sheer, fresh quality, and, and that's what makes 
the both the memoir perfumes seem like they're not the usual kind of big Arabian Nights free for all. But don't be fooled because once the absinthe burns off, you get right into bass notes. I mean, it's just all bass notes as far as the the eye can see and the nose can smell. So you have leather and castorium and uh, musk and labdanum and incense and there's cloves in there and um, I've just oh I sprayed some a little while ago on this part of my body no perfume prison tattoos but I can't mistake this fragrance and um, buried almost suffocated underneath all of these incredible bass notes which I love uh, are rose and jasmine and they're way down in there and the jasmine in particular really makes memoir woman smell like a, a very upscale posh uh, Dior hypnotic poison it has that that same kind of musty jasmine mystery uh, with even more decadence so pretty much memoir woman boils down to a leathery floral and it's got a lot of mystery I don't feel like I'm that familiar with it yet but I'm really looking forward to wearing it more and I feel like this one is particularly autumnal because it just really does meld with kind of the dampness and the dankness and the darkness that's three D's so those are all my perfume picks and I would love to know very curious and in fact nosy I'd like to know what you guys are wearing this autumn if you put it in the comments below, I'd be most interested to read and perhaps even comment. So let's share. I'm Katie Puckrick and I smell.